Hey guys, I'm Natalie Hodge. Welcome to Snapcoms, where we bring you news in a snap. Guess what? It's our 50th episode. <laughs> and speaking of celebrations, Minister for Education and Culture, Honorable Myron V. Walwin, has announced that the 51st annual Virgin Gorda Easter Festival festivities will take a different format than we are accustomed to, with activities being scaled down to take into consideration the current circumstances of the territory following the passage of Hurricanes Irma and Maria. The Easter festival will feature a gospel fest on March 30th, food fair on March 31st, and a beach picnic on April 2nd, as was done in the early years of the festival. A major change to the weekend festivities is that the usual Easter festival village will be excluded from this year's event. Honorable Walwin stated, the Easter festival is a staple in the Virgin Gorda community, and I fully understand and appreciate the concerns raised by persons, particularly those who would have received damage to their homes and those who would have lost jobs in the hospitality industry. However, I think it is important that we strike a balance to ensure that the culture of the Virgin Islands is preserved despite our circumstances. The festivities will feature a celebration of the culture of the Virgin Islands through local entertainment and activities. The business community of Virgin Gorda is also invited to independently host various activities to supplement what is being put on by the Virgin Islands Festival and Fairs Committee. Persons interested in assisting with the upcoming celebrations are asked to make contact with Miss Anne Leonard in the Department of Culture at Anne dot leonard at yahoo.com stay tuned to snapcoms up next derelict vehicles and backyard burning residents are invited to participate in the 23rd annual celebration and 18th wreath lane ceremony on march 5th to pay homage to the territory's first chief minister the late honorable h laverty stout the event is hosted by the Government of the Virgin Islands in collaboration with the H. Laverty Stout Commemorative Committee and will be observed under the theme, What Would H. Laverty Stout Do Right Here, Right Now? The day's celebration will be held at the West End Cemetery and will begin promptly at 9 a.m. Welcome back to SNAPCOMS. Now, let's move on to the topic of environmental health. Chief Environmental Health Officer Mr. Lionel Michael is appealing to residents to refrain from backyard burning because of the environmental and personal health impact on the community. The Environmental Health Department continues to receive numerous complaints and is calling on persons to refrain from burning garbage as it affects young children, the elderly, asthmatics, and persons with compromised immune systems. Backyard burning is also harmful to the environment and a potential fire hazard, he said. Here's what you can do with your yard waste. Make piles with branches, trees, and leaves and allow them to decompose. If you are unable to manage your yard waste or any other type of waste that is on your property, contact the Department of Waste Management for assistance with removal. Mr. Michael said that proper disposal of waste is a matter of health importance. It helps to improve aesthetics and reduce pest infestation. However, we are asking the community to avoid burning and to dispose of their waste in a safe, public health manner. Now, on to derelict vehicles. Over 600 derelict vehicles collected by the Department of Waste Management are now being recycled. The department's manager, Mr. Greg Massacott, said once the vehicles are collected, they are taken to the temporary derelict site at Parkwood Pond, where they are stripped of certain parts, drained of their fluids, crushed, and stockpiled for export. Mr. Massacott said, we are trying to operate as environmentally friendly as possible, hence the removal of the gas or diesel from the vehicles. The public is asked to continue taking residential waste to the incinerator in Parkwood Pond and galvanize and white goods to the debris management site in Cox Heat. That's it for today, guys. I'm Natalie Hodge signing off. Be sure to tune in for your daily feed of Snapcoms, where we bring you news in a snap. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Twitter, and Facebook at BVI Government and Instagram at GIS BVI. Snapcoms is brought to you by the Disaster Recovery Coordinating Committee, Government of the Virgin Islands. <laughs>